everyone. Welcome to Morbid Planet. I'm your host, Erin Chapman. This is actually going to be our first installment of A Virgin's View. Now, for some of you that have read some of them before, I used to do Virgin's View on a website called vamp.org. And basically what it is, is it's I go and review a classic film. And at the time it was just vampire ones. And I know nothing about the film, no background, no reviews I've read, no information from people. It's just strictly you go in with, as we say, virgin eyes. So I really enjoyed doing this for the print version. So I wanted to start doing this on the YouTube channel here. And this time it's going to expand to classic horror as well. So not just vampires, but we will throw in some vampire ones eventually, just because it's one of my favorite parts of the genre. To join me along with this journey that I do call it a journey just because I love doing these because they're so much fun is I have a co-host today and my co-host is Jerry Knapp who is joining me from Washington and basically Jerry is a big horror buff he also has his own website as well and also he has a podcast called Get the Knack so welcome Jerry thank you so much for taking part in this new project with me well, thanks for having me on Morbid Planet again, my second appearance. I very much enjoyed the first one. So yeah, no, this is gonna be a lot of fun. I, you know, obviously got to know you through Vamped yeah. uh, originally and all your Facebook groups. And I, and I remember reading the, the Virgin reviews. And when you brought this up, I thought this is a great idea. It's be a lot of fun. So Jerry's going to tell us a little bit about the film that we're actually going to be talking about today. Yeah, it's American Werewolf in London. Uh, came out in 1981. I have to say, full disclosure for everyone is I'm not a zombie girl. I'm not a werewolf girl. I like my vampire movies and other horror movies as well. There's this, this gap from the 1940s to 1981 mm -hmm. in werewolf films. Okay. And, and, and there's a couple in the 50s that are okay. And you can see Jack Pierce's influence uh, on the makeup and that kind of thing. He did, you know, he did the Wolfman with Lon Chaney Jr. and, and all those films. Um, and he's also the guy who created and, the Frankenstein And I've never makeup. seen any of those either. So Right. right. So <laughs> that's another thing I'm going to encourage you to do is to go back to Universal <laughs> as part of your education in the horror genre when it yeah. comes to films. Uh, is to do that. But American Werewolf in London is directed by John Landis, who's one of my favorite directors of all time. He brought us Animal House, Blues Brothers, Michael Jackson's Thriller video, uh, but he brought us Animal House and a lot of other things. And he, and he dabbles in horror. And one of the things about American Werewolf in London that they gave us that we had never really seen before was an actual wolf-looking werewolf. Okay. Because if you if you go back to the 40s films with Lon Chaney Jr. and even this one 1950 film, I can't remember the name of it, but kind of the 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 character similar to Lon Chaney Jr., he's more humanoid. So right? is this the type where you know they're walking on two feet instead of like all fours? Exactly. Okay. And and then Landis film, Rick Baker, who wins an Academy Award and Oscar yes. for his makeup effects for this, creates a transformation scene that that rivals Jack Pierce's from the 40s right okay. but this is David Naughton becomes this this creature in right before your eyes right and it had never been done in this way before right you know what a fun fact that I looked up as well when you told me about Rick Baker was he, besides winning the Oscar for best makeup for the film, he actually won seven times for makeup. And I was yeah, just like, wow. And he was nominated for 11. Yeah, so, Rick Baker's one of the greatest of all time, right? One of the greatest creature creators of all time. Yeah. So I guess we ought to, would, uh, set this up first, right? So you have two Americans, David Naughton and Griffin Dunn, uh, David and Jack. And, uh, and, and they're backpacking across Europe, right? And they end up in England, rural England, and they end up uh, at a pub called um, the Slaughtered Lamb. They're there on a night that everybody's all kind of worried. It's a full moon, as you can see behind you. You're worried about the full moon, right? They tell the, tell the boys, they throw the boys out of the pub and say, you know, you guys got to go. Um, they end up out off the road on the moors they get attacked by a werewolf uh jack is killed and david is injured yeah ends up in a in a london hospital 
there's some great comedic moments here. There's a scene where David wakes up in the zoo and he steals a kid's balloons to, to cover his, uh, his naked bits. And, <laughs> and the, the little kid tugs mommy's coat, a naked American man stole my balloons. It's, it, you know, and this is John Landis, right? I mean, cause here's a guy who comes from animal house. He comes from all these comedic films. So yeah. there's some great light moments in this film, but it's very, very deadly serious film. And, and it's interesting because the, the climactic scene happens in Piccadilly Circus in, in London. And it's funny because the one time I went to London, uh, my wife and I had to go to Piccadilly oh, Circus. Did you? <laughs> yes, at night. I've been there too. Yeah. Because I wanted to see it at night because of this movie. Oh, that's right? cool. Okay. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I wasn't expecting a similar experience. I just wanted to see it. Yeah. Right? Where they so, actually filmed it. Yeah. Right. And it's totally different than the film today because that was 81 and I went in 2014. That's one of the things that I really liked. I wanted to get into was the, some of the locations as well. So right. what I liked was just even in the intro and the credits were going. And then the fact that they were on the moors, because one of my favorite places, because I, before COVID I'd go to England every year. And one of my favorite places all of England is I love going to Dartmoor, which, you know, Hounds of Baskerville, Sherlock Holmes. Sure. And I was like, oh, those look like the Moors. So after I watched it, I actually had to figure out which Moors they were on just because I was curious. Um, they're on Yorkshire Moors, but, you know, which is up northern. Um, and then it made me laugh when I saw the slaughtered lamb for the pub, just because, again, I've been to so many pubs over there. Some of them have weird ass names. It's just, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, but what I really liked was I could relate to when both of them walk in and, you know, it's just all of a sudden it's just quiet mm -hmm. and they just all stop and they look and they're, you know, glaring at people because we've had that happen. We've gone into a few pubs here, even though I'm with over there with some people that are local, some people that, you know, were from here. And yeah, it's the weirdest thing when you go in because it's just, they're so small community based you walk in and it's just like silence you know and then then you have the one guy who you know is uneasy right he's the guy yes. who's gonna sell everybody out and tell the truth right he's like so he, inside he's gonna explode he was just sitting right. there yeah and and when he when he throws the dart and misses the you made me miss <laughs> right i mean there's just so many the little nuanced performances from all the different people the the pub keeper right the the barmaid mm -hmm. right yeah. she she's worried for them but she's like y'all can't stay here you gotta go right and then, and then after though she's like oh we, we no can't no we, no but it's you like go. you just kicked them out right yeah. right and so so there's a let's talk about the folklore for a minute right so the whole thing that gets me about werewolf folklore is it is pretty much invented by universal films in 1940s right with the wolfman and all the sequels frankenstein versus the wolfman all the way to abbott and costello meet frankenstein if you're bitten or scratched by a werewolf yeah you're gonna turn into one yeah if uh the the full moon comes you turn into one what, yeah. right what gets me about that is the full mo moon is like full one night a, a, a month right yes and that was my one of my points was i was like how did it do two nights in a row right and i've so... always won and i've looked that up because i had the same thought right I'm yeah like, how i mean i love the full moon and i i am a cancer not that i subscribe too much to astrology and 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 all and zodiac and all that but i'm like how often is it full if we're looking at werewolf lore? It's like one night a month. That it's That's what I thought full. when they were running on the moors and, you know, the wolf is chasing them and they're freaking out. Did you know that the sound for the wolf is made of nine different sounds? No, I did not yeah, know. Yeah, it was weird. They said they took like pigs, they took like wolves, they took like lions, they took, and even a train is mm. part of the sample. So they took nine samples, mixed it together, and that's what they got was what they used. And it's it's really chilling. Um, it, it's part of it because you, you hear it in a lot of scenes before you actually see the werewolf. Yeah, and um, it's getting closer and closer. Exactly. It, yeah. it's, so there's several elements that go together to make this a fantastic film, right? You have you have the story, which I think is is really good. Then you have the special effects as far as the makeup and the transformations and all that. Mm -hmm. And then the sound design, as, as you mentioned, which I, I, I've always noticed, but I didn't know how. 
right? Yeah. I know more about how they made some Star Wars sound effects than I ever knew about that. <laughs> See, I don't know right. that. So that's okay. Right. <laughs> right. Another story for another day. But the thing I, you know, from beginning to end, I think this is, this is just this fantastic movie and this fantastic tragic story of a, of a guy. It's almost, what was that, you know, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's court, right? You got, you get the, the American who is out of place, out of time, doesn't belong. Mm-hmm. He's thrust into a situation he didn't want to be in. He has one person on his side in, in the nurse. Yeah. And, and, you know, he becomes this monster, he becomes this thing. And, you know, you don't know whether or not to revile him or root for him. But the weird thing was when we go back to the nurse though, it's like he had a near death experience. He was out, the guy said for what, three weeks, I think it was. And then he wakes up and instead of like, oh shit, I should fly back home and go back to the States and see my parents. I'm going to go stay at this random nurse's house. (laughs) <laughs> Who didn't I say the it was for. a perfect movie i you know um, i was just like this seems very unrealistic but okay <laughs> right okay well so do werewolves but you know yeah. suspension of disbelief right no i yeah I, there there's an element of insta love that that kind of kind of you know we obviously don't care for that in in written form in books either so you know but when when you think about it and you look at it um, you know, it, it fits right. And, and it, it's, well, it, it went makes, with their storyline. So that's, fine, yes. And but... it makes the end all the more tragic. Right. Yeah. So it ends the only way it can end with, with David being, being shot by a SWAT team, um, which the one piece of folklore they throw out the window is the whole silver bullet thing. Right. Yes, so, they did. So, yeah. Right. So that's the one thing that I thought, eh, right. But at the same time, everybody realizes, Hey, wait a minute, this creature, this monster actually was this guy. Right. So it's when it all comes together for everybody, the SWAT team, the doctor, obviously uh, the nurse, nurse price. Yeah. um, Right. It comes full circle for everybody that, he was telling the truth the whole time he really was this thing he wasn't crazy exactly wasn't crazy um and i just thought front to back even with a few plot holes or or unbelievable things in context it was a fantastic film it's not been replicated and and nothing had come before it by way of especially the special effects you know he's he's a victim of his circumstances um and but when you factor in the special effects, especially the little twists that they have with the ghosts or whatever you want to call them. And, yeah. In limbo. Right. All the way to the very, very end. It's not a perfect film, but it's damn close. The sound effect when he howls, the scene in the subway is just chilling when he's chasing the businessman through, through the tube. It's so just I have unreal. to say the businessman guy, that was one of my favorite scenes out of the whole movie was the businessman and it was just weird because it's how proper british people are Mm -hmm. and it just made me like again going into this i didn't know if this was a comedy i didn't know if this was just a horror so i'm just watching it and then it's it made me kind of laugh in the sense that he's down in what's it tottenham tottenham court i think that's the one he was in but anyway, uh, in Tottenham Station, they he sits there and he hears the noise and he's looking around and he looks down there and he was just like, um, what was it he said? He said- uh, I will report this. I don't, yeah, I'll report yeah. this. And he's like, I don't find this amusing. And it's like, and it made yeah. me think back to like our horror films that are more American. I was like, no, you run for your freaking life at that point. It's not like, I don't find this amusing, guys. It's not, I mean, it's not funny at all. I'm going to report then, you. And then he just kind of wanders off. And what made me think of it, too, because I've been in that station and you could see it's actually legit. It's the station there. And then I was like, but it's so freaking empty. There's no way you could be filming it and it'd be empty. Oh, no. no, no. But no. I did look that up as well. And they said they actually did book it in the station, but it was like three in the morning when it was closed, which explained that. Um, but then I got the part where, you know, he's finally like, okay, shit, I gotta go. And he's just booking it and he's running. But it was funny, the effect of hearing him breathe, because it sounded like he was like dying because he's so out of shape. And he's just like, "Ah, ah, ah, ah." and then he just face plants. The briefcase goes everywhere. The papers go everywhere. everywhere. 
And then it's weird because at that point he just gave up and he's just like, okay, I can barely breathe. I'm lying here. And then he turns around and he gets him. And I was like, dude, why don't you just get up and, you know, at least put up slightly more of a fight. But anyway, the whole thing with him just kind of made me laugh because I was like, but when you see that creature, what are you really going to do? Right. I mean, you're seeing something you've never seen before and, and yeah. it's coming right especially yeah. the scene in the in the adult movie theater stuff, right let's talk about that for a minute right so <laughs> yeah. david david goes to this adult movie theater in piccadilly circus and and uh, because jack his dead friend says come on let's go we yeah. talk to you so they're sitting there in the back row and all of david victim david's victims are there from the full really? moon the night before mm -hmm. like everyone he slaughtered is there exactly and it, it's a real funny scene they're all telling him and they're all telling him all the different ways he should off himself right to end the werewolf's the curse right? and the lady made me laugh because oh, she's, she's all like oh you know just get a gun a gun that would be great and it was just yeah. just you know the way her demeanor was and, and then everyone the was man, just so casual yeah and the businessman no i want him to suffer right it's like you know and, and this whole thing you're know, like this is so such an unexpected scene and then the even even the the pornographic film on the screen has some funny moments in it that are made extend and and it, it's you know it's just it's it's like a slice of life moment it, it, very macabre right so um but yeah jack is a great character he's a lot of you know well and at that point he had mostly left just a skull which was the yeah, puppet version right and he's got just some eyes sitting there and right yeah and this leads to the climax right because you know another full moon and and david no. becomes the werewolf again and, and terrorizes piccadilly circus because he transformed in the theater right without view of the full moon and here's what see there's some things yeah. fall fall down a little bit here here in the film um but uh he ends up cornered by a swat team and and uh you know they uh, tried to contain him you know they're like at least they had the brains they're like oh quick you know throw down the little gate we'll right 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 they right, tried right. you know they tried the did. yep and uh didn't work but and then when we got up to there and i remember i was like looking at how many minutes were left and i was like oh something shit's gotta happen you know because we're almost out of time and then that's when like the he turned and then you know came out and it's just like a freaking massacre in piccadilly circus we've got cars crashing we've got people getting slaughtered all over the place and guys getting like squished between cars so it wasn't just you know werewolf attack. heads are popping off yeah like yeah. and i loved how when he broke out of the theater he ripped off um the scotland yard the guy that was kind of a dick he just ripped his head off and it flew and it was the like oh with this and kind of kept going and then we have a massacre this is great and then they shot him and it's it well the difference is in this there is the massacre right? yes at the which end at least Dracula. made it kind of worth it more because i was like okay and again logistically because that's where my brain works for a lot of things is i was like oh my god how did they film this back then because they pulled it off in the sense that at least i like that the massacre seemed very legit and it wasn't like you know faked and you know just random things happening or extras here and there it was just crowds and crowds of people that they somehow organized all of this to happen and that's what i liked was it seemed genuine and legitimate and mixed in is the actual werewolf yes. snapping at people and biting yeah. people as as he's he's running through piccadilly circus right so it's not just these random things so happening. then if he was biting the people did he just create a whole bunch of more werewolves Didn't they? see i i had that <laughs> thought too right i mean because there's some folks that probably survived what yeah. happened in, right so, not everyone got killed there i'm sorry but they didn't right so, so we don't end up with a with a, a sequel from that even though yeah. it's been talked about over the years and then you end up with this really bad film american werewolf in in paris um but you know what is it 10 years later or whatever it is um but the, th the thing about it uh, to this day about this film is there's really good character development. There's really good special effects. And again, like I said, to me, there was nothing before it and there's been nothing since. If I find something like the characters are really good, then mm -hmm. I can deal with like, you know, the weak plot. Sure. But it's not that. really the other way around, I find. Well, they had um, one of the things I also looked up while I was just Googling stuff earlier because I was looking up because I was curious because we know there's no CGI, 
We know that these are like, you know, costumes and things. And they said the actual transformation scene, the first one, um, took them a full week to film. And then they were talking about like for the hair and everything. But then they also, what was interesting was they said for when the wolf was actually attacking people, they made like this wheelbarrow kind of thing. And they had someone, other ones, it was on planks and everything, but they had it like on the wheelbarrow. So it was like, they would push it like towards people. Like it was when it was out, you know. It was coming at you. Yeah, yeah. yeah amazing puppetry, right? I mean, it, it's just fantastic uh, what, what Rick Baker was able to do um, with the uh, the effects in this. Oh my God. Cause, you, cause they cut away in, in the flat, right? When he's mm-hmm. transforming, you, you hear him before you actually see him. It, you're stunned. You've never seen anything like it in a in, in a film. Because well, and again, back then, right? Right. Like, you had no CGI. It's all practical effects. And again, the '50s film that I, I was referencing, it's it's again, it's a, a humanoid person, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody on two legs with with just you know a lot of hair, a big hairy face. This is this is a creature you've never seen in a film before. And the part where he's actually lying on the floor in her flat and you know he's on his back and you could see like everything growing they said they actually had cut out the floor so he had half of his torso coming Mm. out and then the whole bottom half was just like the fake stuff well and even just the angles that they did with the camera and just everything just to get that feel and just you know get that all across to the like i could imagine seeing it on a big screen back then in the day that would be really cool that's the like I liked the effects I liked the massacre at the end and you know I liked a few little moments like the businessman scene but then otherwise some of the other parts I'm like this is kind of corny and I'm like eh, you know it's okay but otherwise for those aspects I really enjoyed it so what would you give it out of your on your rating system out of five right what would you what would you say I would have to say probably I'd give it about a three and a half just because, and like I said, it's weird for me because the characters again is what I really enjoy. And like, I found maybe because it was mostly British, maybe it was because it was the eighties. Maybe it was just, you know, I didn't know it was a comedy. So part of me is like, is this, is this not, I'm not really sure. Cause I was more under the impression that it's just supposed to be a scary, you know, freaky movie. Um, so some of the characters and stuff like that didn't do it for me. So that's where, but the part that I give it the higher marks for is the parts that I liked. Like I said, the massacre. And then I liked the special effects because the special effects, like I even paused it and I went back and I like watched the transformation one again, just because I was like, oh, cause I know it wasn't CGI. So I wanted to watch it again and then see how they did it. So that's there aren't a lot of flaws with the with the special effects, right? I mean, when you when you think about it being puppetry, when you think about it being yeah. a practical effect, there's not a lot of holes you can you can poke in that. And we can sit here and poke all kinds of holes in a lot of the other, uh, as as you said, kind of cheesy stuff or, or mm-hmm. corny stuff, right? Um, I don't, you know, I don't think in '81, at least as I remember it, thinking of it as a comedy at the time. Mm, right i thought i thought of it as a horror film and i still think of it as a horror film but it does have comedic elements right i mean there there's some of this stuff like the dream sequences right that uh, right the (laughs) the forest the the forest is one thing right the the whole thing in his house with his family and the the bathtub and the 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 folks in the not nazi costumes i have to say i'm sorry but that was in my notes for a brief second because it was like they're wearing whatever army attire they had and i don't know if you know but the guy on the very far right um it was like i guess his helmet kind of looks like darth vader so a little at bit. First, yeah, my a, brain was a, like why is darth vader here and then i was like oh it, okay. right yeah so you have you have these weird zombie creatures with machine guns attacking his family and i don't yeah it, it's I attribute it to being a fever dream, but that if I had to, to poke one major hole in the film, that that would be it. That and, and throwing the silver bullets out the window at the end. 
So you, it was just so random that part. And I just remember, I I was like, a hundred percent. I, I, I can't disagree with you. I'll disagree with your rating. Yeah. I would give it more somewhere in the four to four and a half range. I can't, I wouldn't give it a five because it is not a perfect movie. Right. There are yeah. same things we could, right. They, they throw a little lore out the window. They, you know, um, but you know, it's it funny. had good elements though. And I'm, I'm glad you see those elements and, and you see the elements I hoped you would see when I recommended this film for you. Yeah. So it's kind of funny that you you bring up some stuff about you know it being 1981 right because mm-hmm. it, it is very difficult to look at things in the past through today's lens and i yeah. always i always try to look at things through the lens of the time if i'm going to go back and watch it again because yeah. i have written numerous treatises on on this subject and all the character arcs and and everything all the through lines for dracula the wolfman frankenstein's monster the mummy which is um, on your blog i believe absolutely yeah which is linked below in the description for anyone who would like to read appreciate that (laughs) um yeah it's it's interesting because all a lot of the stuff that we're enjoying today i'm a big fan of you don't understand where we are today or where we're going unless you know where we came from and otherwise, uh, make sure to subscribe. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, like this video. And again, if you have any suggestions for films coming up or something that you know you want us to check out, because we're going to be doing more of these. So stay tuned for that. And thank you, Jerry, for being my co-host today. This was fun. So yeah. thanks for having me, Aaron. I really yeah. appreciate it. I guess my final verdict, I would say three and a half. Jerry said you were what a four and a half four to four and a half somewhere in there yeah like I said I can't give it a five but yeah yeah, it's it's a little little higher than yours so that's our take on American Werewolf in London and otherwise stay tuned and tune in next week and we'll see what's coming up and stay safe at home and stay morbid bye for now